Uh, can you talk more about the the Spanish influences in Benguet itself? Because I'm 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 Iboloy, and yeah. I I actually don't know much about like the actual um, the evolution of the Iboloy people in relation to Spanish influence in in conjunction to the rest of the Cordilleras. Because growing up, I've always I've always felt like the my, my like. Iboloids were like the more boring out of all the like compared to the Kalinga, you know, the tattoo no hands, stuff. So I've always uh, exactly, yeah, but exactly. you dance I've a long always... time. Come on, what are you complaining about? <laughs> that's that's our, our most hard endurance, <laughs> sure. But you can dance yeah, longer yeah, so... than all of us. <laughs> yeah, there, there were the Spanish, of course, they came for two reasons uh, to spread the uh, Christianity and to get a little wealth out of the Some Philippines. Gold, yeah. And the wealth of the Cordillera was gold. And that gold was in Benguet. So that's really what they yeah. were after was the gold. Uh, but the Igorots were very good. There's a priest who said, boy, you ask them about their gold mines and they will lie to you like crazy in order to protect them. <laughs> so the Spaniards <laughs> never found the gold mines. Never <laughs> found the gold mines in Benguet, in Itogon. Uh, um, so, but they did bring Bring, they tried to bring the religion and were sort of able to bring it a little bit, but not very successfully, but they did get control of the province. For the most part, I think the Northern area above Kabay and the Bugias in Bugias, they still had a, a difficult time there. Uh, but so that's that's why the Benguet people, <laughs> you say they're boring because they, <laughs> okay. Now, as far as being Christianized, they sort of halfway, you know, they'd accept Christianity, you know, just to get along because the Spanish military was there in Trinidad. You know. mm -hmm, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. uh, people like uh, Juan Carino, I think, um, I think I'm guessing only, I'm thinking he, know, he knew how to read and write and he knew Spanish, I'm guessing. But a lot of the other people there, they did not. If they needed to have a document written down or something, they went to the Ilocanos, who also lived there. And the mm -hmm. Ilocanos were the ones who did all the, the writing for them. Mm -hmm. So when my grandfather got there in 1896, he said, I, I, in Benguet, he said, hardly any Christians here. Mm -hmm. Aside from the Spaniards, of course. But hardly right. any Christians. Interesting. How, how far was the Spanish reach within the Cordilleras? Because my mom's from Cabayan. My dad's from Batan. I was born in the Trinidad. Uh, what yeah. what was the what was the strength of the Spanish, um, I guess, reach within within that region? How far? I did think the go? reach the reach went up up to Cabayan. I think north mm -hmm. of Cabayan, perhaps not mm -hmm. not so much. I mm -hmm. know that when the Philippines see what happened was Benguet was under Filipino control for about a year and a half, from July of 1898 to December of 1900. And the Filipinos came up from uh, Pangasinan. They followed the Nagilian Trail and they kicked the Spanish out of Trinidad. Mm -hmm. So the Spanish couldn't go back down because that's where the Filipinos were coming up from. So they fled the other way to Bontoc. And the oh, well. medical officer of the Spanish uh, group in Trinidad wrote my grandfather and said, pray for me. I'm headed for Bontoc. My head may not be on my shoulder. <laughs> before, uh, what happened to I that group? Did, did they make it back or did they? Yeah, most, most of them made it. It was a military group. So they, they made it. They had guns and stuff. Like that. They made oh, it to Bontoc. Yeah, yeah. They made it to But then the Filipinos took over Benguet briefly. And Juan Carino mm -hmm. became the governor. And then oh, the again, came. for about a year. And then the Americans came and kicked them out. You know, that's the, end of it. the Buffalo soldiers or the... Yeah, the, the black uh, black soldiers, white officers. Right, right. Rod, those people, yeah. <laughs> it was in that time that the... Because what happened was Antonio Luna figured that the Filipinos could hold the Cordillera. They may not be able to hold the lowlands, but they could hold the Cordillera indefinitely. And he was hoping the Americans would then get sick and tired of trying to colonize the country if they couldn't hold the Cordillera. So his plan was to uh, defend the Cordillera, but Aguinaldo had him killed before that could, uh, yes. that could take place. Oh. Uh, but I, so, 
Wow, Sorry. that sounds very Filipino yeah. to do. <laughs> well, right. remember that he, he had Bonifacio killed first. Oh, that's true. That's yeah. right, right. That's yeah. right, you know, that's right. Want Kill it. all your rivals. Didn't, that's right. He didn't want yeah. any competition. But I know he regretted it. Uh, I think, what was it? Was Jay, was it one of his grandsons or something like that? Was uh, I think, oh, in the end, he became the American lackey, right? Yeah, but the, according to the family members, he did he did regret his decisions on you know mm. so like according to like some of our teachers at san francisco state who knew some of the ancestors of uh you know so like they said he did regret it that is what it is you know yeah well it is what it is at that time yeah who knows it was a messy time so when the americans were pushing um aguinaldo further and further north from malolos to Kamenatuan to the Gupan, and then from there further north, what happened was that the plan was still to go to the Cordillera and hang out there. Uh, but what happened was Aguinaldo thought that the Americans would easily negotiate the Nagilian Trail and catch him. So he went further north, but Paterno, who was the prime minister then, took the Nagilian Trail to Baguio. But by the time he got to Baguio, he was fine there, but he had no contact with the rest of the government, so no way. And Aguinaldo went further north to, uh, what is it, Candon or somewhere like that, and then crossed the Cordillera through there. And his crossing involved going through a mountain range in Ilocos called uh, Mount Tilan, and the pass was Tiran Pass. Oh, Tiran so, Pass, yeah. Yeah, okay. and so what happened was the, uh, the, the, the very famous fight there, Gregorio del Pilar and 60 men said, okay, we'll, we'll hold this pass so you can escape. You know, we'll delay the Americans as much as possible. So that lasted, that fight lasted one day. It took mm. the Americans one day to kill del Pilar and, and get through the pass. But the fascinating thing is there's a journal carried by David Barrows, who was the first chief of the Bureau of Non-Christian Tribes. And he said that, at some point in the pursuit of Aguinaldo uh, in Talubin, in, in Montauk, the sergeant in charge of the prisoners that he had taken, the Filipino prisoners, sold them to the Montauk, 22 of them. And the Montauk immediately uh, speared them and chopped off their heads. Oh, wow. Uh, Man. Uh, yeah. 100 yeah. So well, the point is that the, the Cordillera people, and even the day, and my grandfather said this, even the Ipoloi were not sympathetic to the revolution. Yes. Because those yes. people from the lowlands came up to the mountains and treated them just as badly as the Spanish uh, treated them. Yes. Yeah. Yes.